Hello drummers and other creatures. In this video, I'm gonna show you the four essential methods for learning anything you need to on the drum kit. I've been teaching full-time drums for about 15 years and I've taught hundreds and hundreds of people from beginners to intermediate and advanced players how to play the drums or how to improve their drumming and resolve various issues. And one thing that seems very clear to me is having a set of logical tools to use when you're learning something new makes the whole process a lot easier and more fun when you can think about how to approach anything that's challenging at all. So offering these four ways ways of learning any patterns, please watch all the way through to the end of the video so you get the full picture and you can then try out the different methods and assimilate them any way you like into your practice. You don't have to follow everything rigidly but these are ideas and principles that you can apply to anything that you want to learn. I'm going to use the bog standard stereotypical bossa nova pattern for an example here but just to emphasize you can use this with pretty much anything once you got the idea. Right, now let's jump straight in and we're gonna look at the first method, which is very snappily called doing it really, really slowly. Whenever you look at uh, a new pattern that you want to learn, whether it's a few bars or whether it's uh, you know a whole sheet of stuff you want to learn if you're trying to learn a tool song or something, in theory, you can progress through a series of notes. It's going to be, you know, whatever, one, anywhere between one and four limbs, I guess and you can progress through those notes at a slow enough speed that you can actually execute whatever you want. That's not necessarily the way you want to approach everything, but in many cases, I find it's really, really helpful, at least as a preliminary introduction to a new pattern. And it's something that I very often will apply when I'm doing something new. So let's take our Boston over example. I'm going to count this as two bars of eighth notes, although it could be seen as one bar of sixteenths, but uh, playing it as eights is a little bit more straightforward uh, in most cases, I think. And again, if you want to follow this, check out the description box where I've put a, um, a link to the beat so you can follow this uh, and read along. Don't just try and follow this by watching the video. It might be a bit heady. Anyway, so First things first, playing it really, really slowly. I'm gonna play really slowly. I'm going to play the pattern slowly enough so that I can think about every event that's going to occur. Am I playing the this hand or that hand and this foot, what's going together and so on. I'm just gonna do it really, really slowly. Here we go. That's it. Nothing remarkable about it, but it's really interesting that people seem to struggle with the idea of like being really, really, really slow at times. And whether you're learning your first groove patterns or whether you're trying to figure out how to play a songo or something more complex, um, this will work to just lay out the sequence of events so that your brain has some sim similarity, has some familiarity with what to expect. So method number one, doing things really, really slowly. Method number two, the second method we're going to do is separating our limbs. And that can mean separating the limbs in any way that you choose. In this example, let's just play the hands first and then we'll play, I don't know, let's see what happens. But you can separate your limbs into right hand and right foot or left hand and right hand or whichever way it feels like would be the easiest thing to start with. So in this case, I'm gonna be playing the bossa nova pattern without the bass drum, just to get myself familiar with the pulse and with the sort of cross stick sound of things, okay? So I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna do it slow and relaxed as well because we're just starting this.
So, I don't, I've left the snares off and it makes it a bit sort of resonant -y. Let's do that again. All right, um, this, this way I can just sort of get into the sound of the, the pulse of the hi-hat and hear the, the cross stick pattern which really defines this beat, right? Now, this time I'm gonna play the hi-hat and the bass drum and just let, let my brain get used to that. And then I'm gonna put them all together and see how that goes. Another way I could do that, I didn't think to show, but you could do the bass drum and the uh, cross stick as well together. See how that works. And then throw the hi-hat in. Now, this particular method doesn't always work for me that easily. I sort of demonstrated that. Obviously, I already know how to play this pattern. Um, but I have some students who seem to be able to get it together with even fairly complicated things by just working out the two hands together and then throwing the bass drum in or you know doing the, the, the bass and the snare and then adding the hi-hat or ride or whatever. So that can work really, really well in a lot of situations. Um, and also be, be aware if you try one of these methods, it doesn't work brilliantly for you. Um, you know, try something else, don't worry about it. Um, now, we're gonna do the third and fourth methods. Uh, if you're enjoying this, if you find this at all useful, or if this is raising any questions for you that you'd like some sort of follow up on, make sure you comment in the link below, in, not in the link below, in the comment section below, but make sure also that you click the subscribe button if you like this video and you think I might have something useful to tell you in the future. It'll allow you to keep track of what I'm posting and when I do. Okay, let's move on to the third method, which is called chunking. And I think that's a fairly common name for this method. And by the way, these aren't ideas that I invented. Um, most things that you see people talking about are common ideas that we've heard from our teachers and our, you know, influencing people over the years. So just be aware of that. But this is called chunking. Chunking just means that we're going to take a chunk of a groove, and this is uh, something that I use a lot, and you'll see me explaining in various videos as well when I'm showing you how to play something. Uh, we're gonna take a little chunk of a thing. We're gonna focus on that. Then we're gonna move on to the next chunk, and in this case, we're gonna divide the pattern into four chunks. We're gonna work on each chunk on its own, and then we're gonna sort of assemble them together like a little Lego thingy. Okay, now our first chunk would be the one and two and. Well, that, that's the way I'm choosing to do it. You could do it differently as well. But one and two and is a fairly digestible way to, to play the thing directly. And you don't necessarily have to do that very, very slowly, but go at any speed that you're comfortable with. So I'm just gonna play one and two and, in which case is this. And I'm going to repeat that a bunch of times until it feels comfortable. And it's quite useful to count out loud while you're doing that. So you would count one and two and. The next chunk is the three and four and, which has the, the bass on the three and the and of four, and then the cross stick on the four. So it would be like this. Okay, in the next bar, we have the one and two and again, which will have a cross stick on the two and the bass on the one and the and of two.
and the last chunk will be the three and four and, which has the bass on the three and the and of four, and then the cross stick on the and of three. I completely lost how that chunk's supposed to go. Cross stick on the and of three. Bear in mind that some of these methods don't work that well for things you already know, but that's a whole nother story. Anyway, okay, so I've worked out each one of my four chunks. Now I'm going to do the, the bigger chunks by assembling the one and two and three and four and the first two chunks, and then we'll do the last two chunks as well. So I'm gonna play one and two and three and four and the first bar. And then I'm going to put the last two chunks together, the one and two and three and four and of the second bar. And then finally, I'll put the whole thing together and see what happens. And there you have it. That's the essence of the chunking method. Now, bear in mind, it really depends on what material you're working on, what level of challenge it presents to your existing drumming skills and so on, to how easily you might find it to put things together in this way or that. So again, I'm playing something I'm familiar with, but you might find that working on those chunks takes a little while. Putting them together, you have to be a little bit more careful and go at a slow tempo. That's the essence of the method there. Right, finally, we've got the, um, the fourth method, which is the incremental method. And I learned this from a David Garibaldi book called uh, Future Sounds, where he describes this very nicely. And for the material in that book, it's absolutely perfect. And I actually find this works really, really well for a lot of things uh, I'm learning. So. I think the main benefit is it kind of lets you do things at a faster tempo. So if you feel like you want to kind of just fling yourself into something, take this method and try it. Uh, it works quite well for that. Now, how does the incremental method work? The, the way it's described by David Garibaldi, and I suppose the pure method, is that we take a little bit at the beginning of our pattern, we play what we can immediately play. So let's say I know that I could play uh, the one and two and of the pattern straight away. We're gonna play that and then stop playing, but we're gonna count out the rest of the pattern. And then we're going to add just a little bit extra each time we get comfortable with what we're doing. Meaning I'm going to play the one and two and, and I'm going to keep playing that until I feel like it's really a very easy and comfortable thing to me for me to do, right? So on the assumption that you're taking a new pattern, there'll, there'll be, even if it's the, the first couple of notes or whatever, there'll be something there at the beginning that you can play, or even if it's the first note, if you just, if you can play the one, if you're playing a hi-hat and a bass drum or a ride and bass drum or whatever is the first thing you need to play, you can do that at the speed of the, the groove that you want to play, right? So I can go one and two and three and four and, and you know, let's even do that, I'll do that. I'll just play the first couple of, notes, the first two eighth notes. One and two and three and four and. Okay, I can do that. And then I can count out the rest. And as I get comfortable, now this is the key thing you need to understand, is play the, the beginning bit for as long as you have to, for it to just feel like a, an easy thing to do, right?
Okay, and I was thinking there, shall I, shall I go through the whole process step by step and make you watch me do it? You don't need that. You understood what I'm doing, right? So if you take that approach, be patient enough to not add to whatever pattern you're playing until you're very, very comfortable with what you are able to do. So that's the key to, to making that successful, right? And I know you're impatient, I'm impatient, we're all quite impatient. And so when I'm thinking about the one and two and, I need to hold back a little bit. I'm very tempted to play on, but if I do that too early, it's all going to fall apart. And it, then the process is slower than I want it to be. So by being really patient with it and letting myself assimilate the first little bit of the bar that I want to play or the pattern that I want to play and doing it really until I'm comfortable and at ease and relaxed with it, then adding a little something, I don't add too much, just add the next two notes and see what happens there. And if you've added another two notes and you're oh, a little bit wobbly, just back off again to the bit that you're familiar with and then add again. The idea is to very, very incrementally add one or two eighth notes at a time, a quarter note, gently, 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 all the while keeping count of the entirety of the pattern. So in this case, I'm keeping count of those two bars. I hope that makes sense. And that wraps that up. You've got the incremental method. You've got the, um, what was it? The chunking method. I shouldn't forget my little snappy four things. We've got the separating the limbs method and we've got the doing it really, really slowly method. And you can take all those things and combine them in any ways that you like. So, oh, just, yeah. For instance, I'll give you an example of how I might combine the separating limbs and the incremental method, right? That was it. I should have baited you at the beginning, shouldn't I have say, said, at the end of the video, I'm gonna show you a clever way to combine them. But okay, I didn't do that, I'm working on it. We're gonna combine the incremental method with the separate limbs method. Now with this groove, the obvious way to do that would be to get the, um, the main ostinato, the repeating element of the pattern, to, well, it's, all, it's all repeating, isn't it? Anyway, we'll, we'll get the, the bass drum uh, going. I'm gonna play it on the right. I'll play the hi-hat on the two and four, but then I'm going to introduce the cross stick bit incrementally. So I'm just gonna add one cross stick at a time. And that's just one example of how I could combine two of those methods by playing separate limbs and incrementally and building that up. So I'm gonna play this time just for a bit of variety on the ride. Um, bass drum, left foot on two and four like this. And that's that. You can go off and practice.